Hello, uh, can you hear me? I hope yes. Good afternoon, Fabiana Giacomotti again. Uh, you know, the, with, we, you know, with this mask, it's not so easy. Um, so, welcome to the third uh, appointment, the third uh, seminar of uh, on our skin dialogues on beauty. Uh, today it's Earth Day, so um, without uh, any other consideration, actually, we decided to, uh, to talk uh, uh, about sustainability on leather and textile, um, again, um, many months ago, and at the end we discovered that today was Earth Day, so it's perfect, the perfect timing. Uh, we have very special guests today, uh, the, the first one of whom um, is uh, the CEO of Borbonese, the very famous and very ancient, more than centennial um, house of leather goods, of luxury leather goods, who will talk uh, first. Uh, but um, we are waiting actually for Professor Ando to connect. It seems that she ha has uh, some problems with the Wi-Fi uh, in her house in Rome. Um, I'm not in Rome today. I'm, I, as you see, uh, we are in Milan and it's a beautiful day, but it seems that we have a lot of um, weather, um, bad weather reports starting from Rome and actually don't know. Uh, we will have uh, later uh, Mrs. Giusy Bettoni, who's the founder of a very important uh, company um, connecting and operating with communication about sustainability. She's very busy today, as you can imagine. And then it will be myself uh, who will make not a, a real speech because it will be uh, it should be too long, uh, but a little discussion about the words of sustainability and how communication and mostly language and the lexicon of sustainability and how it is used by companies. But before we start, I'd like to give the floor to our. Uh, host, uh, Mrs. Fulvia Bacchi, uh, General Manager of UNICH. It's up to you, thanks. Thanks, uh, Fabiana. Greetings to all of you. Fourth appointment of the cycle Dialogues on Beauty, which is turning out an interesting moment of confrontation and exchange of experiences and of a mutual enrichment. Thank for this to Fabiana Giacomotti, La Sapienza University, in the person of Mrs. Sandò, and the newspaper Il Foglio. Today, we are going to talk about sustainability, that for the Italian tanny industry is a very important topic. Just a very few words about our sector, <laughs> because I want to underline that the leather is an authentic and sustainable example of circular economy. The Italian tanning industry interprets this approach through a modern industrial model that is a systemic and historical cutting edge. It is the high value added recovery of an activity that is fundamental for human food needs. Italian leather is a living material that increases in value over time and provides a comprehensive qualitative guarantee to all the collection and production developed by its customers. For us, Sustainability, it is a very important word, and I am very pleased that today we are going to speak about this. Thanks, and I 
He no, gave a floor to, to Mrs. Pes so Mr. Pescara, or uh, no, we are I waiting. Have, no, no, we are actually we are actually waiting for uh, Mrs. Sandal to come, but it seems that she has a, 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 a she has a, had to be connected by the phone, and so uh, she doesn't have the proper link to speak, and maybe she will connect uh, at the end to. Uh, to 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 draw conclusions, but uh, I will so uh, uh, starting from from now. Um, I'd like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Mr. Pescara, uh, but before Mr. Pescara will uh, talk about the approach of um, Borbonese to sustainability, uh, please uh, uh, see look at uh, the the Borbonese for winter. Uh, uh, collection movie uh, that um, it was prepared for today. Please. Uh. Thanks again for this. Uh, you know, the music, Mr. Pescara, remind me of, you know, the movies of the 50s Milan. It's yeah. the typical kind of music that you could hear in movies from the 50s. So I leave the floor to you for your presentation because uh, it seems that you have, have been making a lot of efforts uh, on sustainability. And so um, we would like to hear more about that. Okay, thank you very much. Let me thank you to you, Fabiana, and to the UNICH and to the La Sapienza University as well for inviting me here. And just to say that uh, I'm Alexandro Pescara and uh, thank you to you all guys to, for being here. I'm the CEO of Borbonese, that is uh, an historic Italian brand specialized in the creation of accessories. And right now um, we are engaged in the accessible luxury segment, as we say, and we, we were founded in, in Turin in 1910. So with a really strong heritage. Uh, right now, uh, Borbonese is one of the oldest Italian fashion houses uh, renowned for its pernicize or occhio di pornice, as we say, that is a pattern and is more brand the pattern in itself rather than the brand Borbonese itself. And the brand right now continues to attract elegant and cosmopolitan customer 
thanks to the new codes uh, that uh, make the heritage contemporary and absolutely, I think, uh, for the new value strategies uh, such as inclusiveness and absolutely sustainability. Uh, what I'm going to try to tell you briefly, uh, and hopefully without boring you, is a story of willingness to change. As I was talking before with, uh, with Fabiana, uh, seeking new values and trying to align uh, with the today's and future consumer needs. Uh, when Borbonese owner called me, uh, yeah. knowing very much uh, uh, the brand, because it was founded in my own town, in Tudin, as they say, uh, my first question was, what do you want me to do for the Corp? Uh, my intention was to understand if in their mind there could be a path of a renewal and change. And thankfully, the answer was that. We want to reposition the brand and carry it into a new era. Surely, uh, the Corp uh, that... Uh, I found myself facing uh, was like a sleeping beauty uh, for years. I, I said before, for more than 30 years asleep. And at all costs and really quick, uh, I needed to change that and awake the call. And uh, I really think that if you want to undertake an epochal change when you are facing with similar realities, I mean, with a great past, great heritage, one of the most important issues is certainly the corporate culture and the value of the brand itself. Um, luckily, uh, I had the opportunity to choose my team. Um, so people that I personally choose and uh, who helped me in, in the creation of the evolutionary path that I want to imprint to the brand. And uh, they, uh, sometimes they, they, they make joke of me because uh, I think uh, that one main show, it's really over right now. And today more than ever, uh, team is the element that can allow a corporation to create a competitive advantage in the medium long term. And I want to quote you uh, a philosophy that I'm trying to convey to them and it's Ubuntu. Ubuntu is an ethic ideology coming from uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, and it's focus on people's loyalty and mutual relationship. Um, it is an expression that in Bantu language, it means benevolence. Uh, it's a rule of life, I mean, respect for the other. And referring to Mbutu, uh, it used to say, I am because we are. And uh, uh, that's the beginning of the team building process. Uh, Ubuntu philosophy exhort to support and help each other and to become aware not only for the right but also for the duties uh, that is very very important. Um, as I said before we are right now trying to reach an ethical change that arises from the need of finding feedback uh, through an increasingly and, and evolver uh, and, uh, often, uh, um, and mostly an informed consumer. And uh, for that reason, first of all, I really have to thank you guys and your generation because only thanks to you, we are really beginning to talk about uh, a big word, uh, evolution, cultural evolution, value evolution, uh, sustainability, in its broadest sense of the term. I mean, products, transparency, ethics, welfare. And thanks to you and your proclamation, we are perhaps succeeding in what past generation has never been able to do in so many years. And it is to give a radical change on the consumer policy. Surely, I think it won't be easy, but a greater awareness of our environment need a first step and uh, a more respectful attitude to the environment that uh, is surrounding us. But coming back to what uh, uh, I was saying about the mission, I think that to pursue uh, our new path for Borbonese, uh, absolutely together with culture and innovation, I, I've tried uh, with the team to draft what could be the main pillars of our innovation process. And we found 
three main areas um, on which we have to focus on digitalization, sustainability, the consumer. Um, I cannot talk about digitalization right now because uh, um, I do not have enough time. So let's focus on sustainability. And uh, uh, surely uh, those three elements that I said before um, uh, were really silenced in the court for many years. And somehow we had to, we had to uh, be able to refresh or to recreate uh, three elements that are absolutely linked and create link between the modus operandi of the past generation and the new ones. Elements that speak about value, consumption behavior, and a new approach for both the creation of the value and the contents, because contents is going to be very, very important in the future. Um, I could say that uh, our renewal path come uh, firstly uh, from a deep analysis that we had made inside the, the company and thinking about who we were, who we are today, and who we would like to be tomorrow in terms of reputation, values, product, and consumer. Um, obviously, the analysis uh, served us uh, to strengthen the knowledge of ourselves because uh, uh, without knowing really who we are, any path of change uh, cannot be undertaken with efficiently. Uh, one of the output of the analysis uh, um, was that we really need to uh, get an evolution of our consumer and uh, um, absolutely in, in, in terms of age. Uh, our products were mostly focused on a baby boomer consumer and we needed to expand our customer portfolio to talk to a new consumer. But the real ch challenge um, was to make the consumer feel that he belongs to our world and consequently to our brand. Uh, as you know, guys, uh, fashion nowadays, uh, uh, more than ever, is a very competitive arena. And marketing and communication are the main elements with which Corps has to be focused to win the battle, as well as the product, for sure. But uh, communities and sense of belonging play a fundamental role today in the choice of the consumer. Unfortunately, uh, not having the capital available as the giants of the sector has right now, uh, the only choice that I have to try to reach a competitive advantage uh, is to undertake a differentiation strategy. And to be different from the others means that uh, we have to take new roads, maybe less common for our current consumer, but uh, uh, maybe interested in the future for a new one, absolutely. Uh, in order to be able to speak uh, to a new consumer, uh, I said before value, uh, we had to find the right way to talk to the new consumer. And absolutely, I think that was necessary to align ourselves with the value of this new consumer. And one of the main topics on which we had to reflect and develop our content was absolutely the theme of sustainability. Uh, in its broadest sense, um, today, uh, everyone talks about sustainability. But I think that is a very complex and above all complicated things to talk about or to undertake for a fashion corporation like us or for the fashion industry. And um, I strongly believe that every change arises not from the product, but from anyone's own behavior in the respect of the environment. And uh, that is made absolutely of people and things. And um, for this reason, uh, since a couple of years ago, we really try to think uh, about what could be the best approach on the sustainability path for the brand. And we started with a, a series of simple questions. What does sustainable mean for us? What street color economy? What efficient consumption? And from here to undertake, first of all, action within the corporation. Because uh, as I say, the corp is made from 
one side by a long-standing staff and on the others by new managers. So the first challenge uh, we had to overcome was to, be, to, to begin to evolve the corporate culture on a topic that had never been considered before. For example, stop using plastic, stop using plastic bottles, try to use the water from the network, filter it, use uh, uh, recycled paper for any type of uh, internal and external printing documents, uh, simple things. But can that have started to establish different behavior and allow us to really start talking about different culture and approach to the environment. But first of all, need to start from ourselves. Absolutely. Second, but it's, uh, I think the main issue is, uh, is the, the product. But uh, if we are talking about the product, uh, we really open an immense team. Uh, the product is made of many parts, different material, different origin. Um, uh, our positioning on the brand in the affordable luxury segment uh, uh, means that uh, uh, our segment uh, is really uh, price driven. Uh, I mean that the price is really fundamental. Um, so it's really important uh, to achieve the right cost of the goods. Um, we work mainly in three different types of material, nylon, uh, coated canvas, and leather, uh, mainly two, nylon and leather. Uh, and we interact uh, with two uh, different supply chain, China and Italy. But uh, the question that I, uh, I tried to, uh, to answer by myself was, what does the sustainable mean? And I, I, try, uh, I started to follow forum webinars, attending conference. And uh, what I noticed that, first of all, uh, it was a greenwashing. And uh, um, talking about sustainability, it's become more a marketing issue with war rather than a real will, willingness of change for the corpse. And uh, uh, from here, uh, we start uh, uh, to have some path uh, uh, with partners, because uh, I'm not a professor, and uh, um, I'm, I'm trying, but I, I think that uh, only by the knowledge uh, I can really be engaged to understand the process and to try to speak to my team and to tell them how to move to reach our sustainability path. And uh, luckily, uh, when in one of the meetings, uh, I had the possibility uh, to get in touch with uh, a native, uh, digital native corp uh, that I cannot say the name right now, uh, but uh, uh, they really support us uh, in, uh, in, in our path, uh, in our change. Um, let's get back to nylon and leather. I'm not talking about nylon, uh, um, because we are focused on the leather, I can only say that our nylon product right now are 100% total recycle coming from the recycling of the plastic bags, bags or the fishing net. And all our packaging is totally recycled. But the main focus of the webinar right now is the leather. And the topic is, does the real sustainable leather exist? Yes but we have to think about what sustainable means because leather comes from the skin, comes from animals. Uh, I really uh, hear many competitors that are using fake leather, eco leather, uh, mush uh, mushroom leather, um, uh, corn leather, many other, many other products that do not belong to the animal skin. So using the animal skin, what can make it sustainable? Uh, and I think that the circular economy and uh, two main topics, the life cycle of the animal and the tanning process. That's the main focus issues. As I say, I'm not a product man or a product manager, but I, I try to get involved in the process to really understand how it takes or how it works in order to see if it's real efficient to start talking about that or is a bullshit. Um, I think that um, now uh, it could be possible to have 
and uh, to discuss uh, about uh, real leather, starting from the skin of the animal, we move uh, throughout the actual funding process. And here I believe that is the part uh, of the sustainability can be understood as a part of, of less environmental impact on the tanning process. For example, using material less polluting than those not normally used. Chromium, for example, one of the topic. Uh, heavy, meta heavy metals right now are cancerogenic uh, or otherwise are toxic to the human uh, and to the environment as well. Um, I can say that uh, uh, Metal-free leathers uh, are hypoallergenic, uh, hypotoxic, uh, non-cancerogenous, uh, and prevent contamination of the environment, water in particular. Um, right now, the standard process uh, recognizes uh, for a skin to be called metal-free that the sum of the polluting metals uh, is less than 1,000 parts per million, 0.1% of the total weight of the skin, and absolutely, the analysis need to be certified by accredited laboratories. Um, at the same time, so the main pillar, uh, planning process and life cycle, uh, I believe that the treatment of the animal in itself, its origin and provenance, its path and life cycle is also very relevant to the concept of sustainability in itself. And here too, we have undertaken a path with a consortium, no worldwide, called La Granda. The consortium was born in 1997 from the idea of Sergio Capaldo and, and soon become a real revolution in the breeding and consumption process of the meat. Um, the productive philo philosophy of the consortium uh, revolves around a few uh, principles that safeguard the protection of the environment, the animal, and the human well-being. Uh, the family farm is uh, uh, revaluated uh, with the protection of the calf cow line, uh, the choice of the animal nutrition, no silage, no fodder, uh, cereal mixture, beans, uh, uh, that are really ideal for ruminating and which are grown directly by the farmer by practicing uh, field rotation. And um, those uh, uh, create a result uh, in a change uh, that does not require to use antibiotics and uh, emphasize the nutritional and gustative characteristic of the breed. Um, at last, but not least for the fairness, La Granda guarantees uh, uh, for the wool ear, a fixed price of their skin. And thanks to the leather that we develop in partnership with La Granda uh, and with uh, Boschetti that helped us in the tanning process um, uh, without the chrome, um, we can uh, reach uh, uh, and absolutely uh, um, with the new recycle nylon as well, we joined uh, on the 8th of December, the first Borbonese Green Shop in the first green retail park um, that in Turin, that it's called Green Pea. Green Pea right now is a shopping center with over than 100 partners and um, it takes more than 50, 15,000 square meter, five floor, um, that aim to change the relationship uh, with the energy, the movement, uh, uh, and home clothing, uh, and all the things that belongs to the um, to the building, uh, the main themes are lifestyle, furniture, and clothing. Uh, uh, a little a little part of beauty, uh, but all those things are linked by the single uh, common denominator, which is sustainability. Um, from a fashion point of view, Greenpeace right now includes 37 store, uh, absolutely our, and uh, is engaged uh, and collaborate with uh, Zegna, Erno, Cucinelli, Borbonese as well. But uh, what I can say, at least, uh, but maybe not last, uh, um, thanks to the proposal of our team, we, I think that we achieve uh, various targets. But, uh, uh, I also know really well that is uh, uh, really the first step of a long stair. Uh, the sustainability path uh, 
uh, will be absolutely long and hard. And I, I, I know that very well, but somehow we had to start. If you really want uh, to give to the next generation to live in a better environment. That's my thing. That's what I think. And um, that's something I, I, I want to give you uh, briefly and, 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 and shortly. And, that's it. Uh, if you... that, that, that was very, that was very deep. Uh, and and um, I s s thank you so much, Mr. Pescara, uh, CEO of Borbonese, for your uh, words, for your talk. Uh, I'm sure that uh, the students got it and our guests got a very good view on uh, the evolution of Borbonese and what you have been making for uh, approaching this very difficult subject and uh, poor, uh, and now it which is also a, a business purpose and a business aim we have already one question for you because I know you have to be so before I, I leave the floor for a, a, a Roma, to professor Roman and I'd like you to answer if you can to this question that coming it's coming from Alessandra uh, Biancone, which I would like to know because she's very active and I would like to, I, I really appreciate uh, her interest in our seminars. And please ask, in terms of competitors, we know that there are many brands that produce sustainable leather goods. Therefore, my question is, um, which are the strategies that you have decided to adopt in order to enhance the customer retention, oh dear, I think you mean redemption, um, especially as far as the direct relation and the dialogue with consumer is concerned. So your approach to consumers mostly, because you have actually uh, answered to the first, uh, uh, the first part of the question with your presentation. But the second one is, which kind of direct relation you have in with the dialogue with the consumers, with clients? I, uh, I, it's to me correctly, Fabiana. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I think that first of all, we have to be fair and transparent. We, we are talking about transparency, transparency. We are talking about path. We are talking about many things. And uh, absolutely for sure, uh, the new customer uh, is uh, an evolved customer and he know very well uh, the price position, um, the price for value, what we are talking about and what we would like to give to the customer is a total transparency of our process. It means that if we are talking about 100% recycle, need to be it. Uh, in terms of I'm going to show you what we are doing um, what we are doing is uh, um, trying to uh, give to the customer the possibility to belong to our brands and uh, to belong needs uh, to believe uh, and to believe need to be fair. Uh, so um, uh, I'm not a Taliban, so I cannot say my corporation is totally, uh, it's totally green. No, because it, it has to be a bullshit. Uh, uh, is the first step that we started uh, to carry on. Um, we need to discuss with your generation. I don't remember the name of, of, of the student and I'm trying to participate at all these webinars. And uh, uh, I, uh, I started, um, I say I, but it's we, because uh, uh, it, it, it's our team uh, that, uh, that is really involved, me as well. Uh, because I'm really in zone on, on all the project, uh, called Officina Borbonese. Officina Borbonese is aimed to discuss with the people, with young talent, with young generation, in order to understand what is the path that we have to undertake. It means what you would like to have from us. Uh, I'm trying to give you the, the, the fairness uh, with the QR code from the next uh, um, spring summer, you can upload the, the code and uh, you can land it on a web page in which you can really see what we are doing. But I can show you a certificate. 
I can show you the process. It means that I'm going to use the plastic coming from the recycled bottle and I'm going to show you the certificate of that. But you have to believe me because uh, uh, it's something that I show. So it could be uh, a lie or not a lie. Uh, that's something that we have to talk about, but I think all the industry, in order to let you have uh, uh, the clear answer and not to say, is it, is it a lie or is it, is it true? Uh, and on the other side, I can say, I am going to see what can be the process of our supplier. Yes, for sure. I'm going to give them an audit in terms of what? In terms of everything, in terms of uh, people engagement, people employment, welfare, uh, positioning, um, usage of uh, everything, nutrition uh, uh, for the people uh, of the corporation where they work, uh, job experience. Uh, I mean, sustainability is, uh, is really a matter of multiple points. It's just not only the product in itself. I mean, I'm going to make a product, okay, that is, uh, that, that is uh, totally uh, recycled. I'm going to sell this totally recycled, I'm green. No, it's not like that. I mean, uh, sustainability is a country, is a value. So we really and deeply understand what is the process and need to belong uh, about our value. I can say, what is my behavior at home? Uh, am I going to, uh, to use the uh, recycled waste? Uh, I'm doing the right things every day. No. So first of all, I need to start uh, using a correct behavior. But correct behavior means to understand the supply chain, uh, need to understand the product, the production process. Uh, but uh, what I'm going to tell to the customer need to be fair. So I'm going to do that, I reach that, I need to do those other things. So uh, the path it will be very long, but uh, um, I would like to open the corp. Uh, that is one of the most important things that I have in mind. Uh, right now, unfortunately, we cannot with the COVID, but to let people come inside the corporation to see how we work, how is our process, how we, uh, we think about uh, sustainability and what we are doing for the sustainability. That's the most important thing. And that's uh, how I would like to talk to the consumer or better, that's uh, how Borbonese want to talk to the consumer because we are all together. Hopefully that I, I have answered to uh, that. Yeah, yeah, we have, we have another, another very short question. Uh, mm. And which is Mr. Pescara, um, Dick, uh, it is Dick Valbraven, which is a, our students that we know very well from Holland, actually from, and uh, from Amsterdam. And uh, he's, uh, Dick, I'm sorry, but I will have to change some of your words. Uh, in the future, uh, some uh, vegetable substitute to leather will have the same properties as animal leather. Will your company use it? Uh, How is your opinion uh, about uh, it? Uh, uh, absolutely. I mean, I, uh, I said before that many of my competitors, of our competitors, sorry, uh, are using uh, um, not a leather product instead of the skin leather, but it doesn't mean that they are correct or not. I mean that it's another product that we, we, can, we cannot call uh, 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 leather coming from animal skin. Uh, I just want to be focused on, on the process of the animal skin. I can say, yes, we can talk about sustainable animal skin uh, leather, it means that we really need to take care about all the process, but for sure we are uh, developing other materials. Uh, we are developing new gum. We are developing uh, the skin coming from the mushroom. Uh, we, are, uh, we are developing the skin coming from the corn. But in terms of creating the bag, we need to be really linked to our consumer. It means that I cannot change everything into corn or I cannot change everything into a vegan leather because uh, uh, um, some of my current customers 
are willing to have uh, a, a typology of product and I need to educate them on the change. Uh, it means that when I'm talking about you guys, uh, it's really easy to discuss about sustainability and what uh, can be the values of sustainability. When I'm talking about uh, a 50 years old consumer, 40 years old, 60 years old consumer, it won't be so easy. Uh, because in, in her mindset, uh, uh, as I said, um, modus operandi of different generation means that uh, the consumer behavior in the consumption um, are really different. So I need to teach to them uh, that the new typology of product uh, could be the same uh, of the oldest, but sometimes uh, it won't be easy. And so uh, on the other side, I, I, I need to, uh, to govern a, a, a profit and loss. So I need to, um, to be uh, on the line of what I can do and what I cannot do. So that's the real thing. So, um, uh, for a nation brand, um, to take this new road and this new change, it means two things. And that's I want to be really, really clear with you. Or I'm going to invest millions inside the corp and say, okay, I'm not caring about my oldest customer and I'm going to target in a new one. But we have very big obligation, that's people employed. And so I do not have a fund on my backyards. So I'm family owned. So everything I'm going to invest is cut it out from the cost saving. Uh, so I really need to take the right, um, uh, the right things on the right time. That it means that for sure I'm going to use that. Uh, but I'm not uh, uh, swearing you that I'm going to do for the wall collection. Right now, uh, I think of Dick, um, I think is the name of the guy. Um, our collection is, uh, um, let me say, 100% of the collection. 50% is nylon, 50% is leather. 50% nylon, total recycle. 50% uh, leather, 20% uh, sustainable, 10% uh, metal free, and uh, the other normal leather. So, a little part of the other, I mean, the rest of the 30%, I would like to engage and to develop with new developing materials and try to understand how it can go with the customers. Um, how can be filled by the customer? If the customer see that those kind of materials belong to the heritage of Borbonese or starting teaching them, that Borbonese is willing to change. So our new value are belonging to the new product, but it's going to take several years, several seasons. It's not just a step of one season, two season, three season, because uh, the loyalties with the consumer, or I mean, um, the, the feel of belonging of a brand uh, need to be uh, taken season by season, year by year. Right. Uh, thank you for your answer. That was very accurate. And um, before I leave the floor to Giuse Bettone, I actually would have liked to uh, speak myself about semiology of uh, sustainability. But I think that after, um, after your speech, uh, what Giuse Bettone has to say, it's definitely uh, more uh, uh, related to what you have said. But I think that the Professor Romana Ando would like to say hello to everyone. She had some problems in connecting. So uh, please, uh, you, you can say hello to everyone. If, uh, because I'm yeah. sure you're fine. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Fabiana. Um, I'd like to, to start apologizing for being late because I have these uh, internet uh, problems uh, that may happen, of course. And I would like also to, to thank how and to, to give a special and warm welcome to our guest today. Uh, the topic that uh, we are going to discuss, that we started to discuss is really, really uh, fundamental. And uh, I, I can say 
thank you also to UNIT, Consigliere Italiane, Il Foglio and Fabian Giacomotti uh, for this uh, extraordinary opportunity of, of dialogue and uh, uh, the opportunity to discover more about sustainability because I, I, I totally agree with uh, um, Alessandro Pescara. I really appreciate the, the, the speech. Uh, the sustainability is a key word nowadays, but we have to understand it uh, from uh, multiple perspectives. And uh, as I always said, uh, it is a matter of culture. The answer is not only a matter of production, it's a, also a matter of uh, marketing and market, but it's also a matter of culture. So we have to change uh, to do to cooperate now with consumers also in order to uh, to change their mind in order to accept uh, new products new uh, materials uh, and uh, of course uh, uh, we have to consider both the side of production and the side of uh, of consumption so uh, i think that uh, this is a a, um, a great challenge uh, for for us for, for all of us and in particular I just want to uh, to emphasize, to underline that Sapienza in this sense uh, is uh, working hard and uh, hope to uh, to to going on with uh, with this uh, with this topic and with the challenges related to this topic uh, together with our students that as uh, Alessandro Pescara mentioned before, are the target uh, of uh, the uh, sustainability in the sense that they are more conscious, they are more uh, um, motivated uh, no? in understanding sustainability. And probably in this case, our students in particular, they study fashion, they can be also the, the, the promoter of this uh, transformation in our society. So thank you again for your speech. And I'm really thrilled to listen also to the, the speech by Josie Bettoni. Thank you again for, for being with us and for sharing uh, your knowledge and your competencies and your experience with uh, our students. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Romana, uh, for your greetings and your consideration. So uh, you actually actually serve uh, uh, the, the, the perfect uh, um, introduction to Giuseppe Bettoni for what she has to say about materials and difference between materials, leather, and what are um, the, the vegan and new substitutes of leather. So floor is up to you, Giuseppe Bettoni, and later I will talk about language. Thanks. Okay, so uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I'm Giuseppe Bettoni. I'm running uh, Class of Ease, a platform that since 2007 is trying to activate, uh, you know, the values of sustainability throughout the whole supply chain uh, concerning fashion. Uh, and uh, we do through, you know, information, through education, through, you know, tools, uh, you know, really concrete tools. And for sure, materials is quite uh, a base for us. So. Thank you really for having me. Thank you to all the team. I was really listening very carefully because it's something that it's in my heart, but it's also in my mind because uh, as you all said, it's about culture. It's about mindset that is really changing. And for sure, the new generation is leading at the moment. And that's no doubt <laughs> about it. I just left and sorry to be late, but you know, I was with uh, a workshop in Gabon and the only question that they ask me is about uh, the queer vegetal. I, I'm, I do not speak French, but I got immediately <laughs> the point uh, about this. So uh, as um, just a second that I share the screen. So it will be really a little short journey, you know, inside uh, uh, what we, think, uh, you know, in, in terms of class about uh, sustainability, and we will have a short look at the innovative materials that what has been asked us. And, you know, and thanks again, because all the possibility to share a mindset and to share what's, uh, what's going on, it's, uh, it's really important. So let's go to the next one. Sorry, it's okay. Sometimes technology, it's not. Okay, anyway, 
class. I don't know why I have a problem with the screen, but doesn't matter. I will go in another way. Um, so as I said, is a platform, consulting platform since 2007. We try to integrate sustainability and we talk about integration and we will see in a moment what does it mean. Uh, and we do throughout the whole supply chain. And um, but let's have a look about what sustainability. You know, I would like to ask the, the students a little bit about it, but I think we have also time, uh, you know, a zone to respect because all the time that we ask this question around the school, around the world, that we have, uh, you know, very interesting feedback and very different one from another one. But it has a sense because there is no wrong or good because. As uh, Alessandro was saying at the beginning, you know, sustainability is not just about an ingredient, but it's about an holistic approach, you know, that is going from a company down to, you know, everyday actions, basically. And um, we are very close, you know, we, we are trying to share with you here, uh, you know, three kind of um, definition that we love. You know, the first one is really the, let's say the traditional one about uh, the fact that sustainability is a goal that must be reached in a, you know, through a constant journey, you know, a very consistent and constant journey. And uh, we need to develop in order to meet the needs of today without compromising, uh, you know, the, the next need of the new generation. There is a very nice proverb that today I heard at least 10 times for the fact that it's Earth Day, that we do not own uh, the Earth that is coming from our ancestor, but uh, uh, you know, we have like a rent from our children. So we have to think in a completely different way when we use it and we use the resource. But the second part that for me is really important, it's the fact that uh, someone like Nike some years ago already said that there is no innovation without sustainability. We cannot innovate if sustainability is not part of it. And that is really going over something that uh, in the perception of sustainability it is some time ago, it was looking at sustainability at something that as uh, you know was uh, uh, really poor not good looking and just expensive and uh, last but not least uh, this is something that we really you know uh, are supporting there is no sustainability without measuring its environment and ethical impact sustainability of product and processes needs to be properly traced and measured so the fact that everybody at the moment is talking about sustainability should not take us away, you know, our, let's say, attention from the fact that all the time that we talk about it, we need to, uh, you know, show the evidence about what we say. Because uh, if we look at advertising, everything is sustainable, everything is uh, eco-friendly, green, but what does it matter? What does it mean? We have uh, market research where consumers are start to be frustrating because, uh, you know, they do not even believe anymore you know, about the fact that the, the product that they buy is really sustainable because there is no evidence about it. But, uh, you know, let's have, a, um, you know, a look now about what we think is sustainable. So we show at the beginning, uh, you know, four dimensions that we need to achieve if we want to be sustainable. And the first dimension for sustainability is design. You know, design because, uh, first of all, is uh, style. You know, without style, people will never be interested in understanding and in getting and be appealed about a product. And I know that it sounds very obvious, but sometimes it's not. And uh, the second reason, it's even more important because design, the new designer is, uh, you know, inside circular economy, is the one that needs to uh, strategize uh, in order to respect the environment, to respect the people, the ocean, and the animals. So the designer is not just someone that is choosing things, but needs to have uh, a very broad, uh, uh, let's say, vision about, uh, you know, the production <laughs> of uh, this product from a holistic perspective. So uh, design is one, the first step that we as class think it's, you know, the first value. Second one, and sorry, you know, I do not want to leave behind, but inside of design, we have seen how many design, uh, new generation of design strategy are coming. So zero waste design strategy, and, uh, you know, the, the I don't know, uh, 
the low impact on uh, water, uh, you know, we have seen really these kind of uh, values arising. Innovation, you know, innovation, it's about technologies for sure, you know, to create and produce materials and products that are based on responsibly and circular economy values. But these, uh, it's a part of the innovation because uh, on top of these, we have also new business models and we know how stronger they are becoming. Rent, swap, resell, re-commerce, you know, I do not have the slide with me here today because, you know, it's taking a little bit of time to do, you know, going through analysis. But it's very clear that, uh, for example, the uh, reselling part is becoming higher than the fast fashion. And there are numbers to show it. And we can see by, you know, uh, Alessandro was talking about the different ages. It's very clear that it starts with baby boomers. That is also my part, unfortunately, going up to the... Uh, the generation Z in a very high way. So uh, again, sustainability starts with design, but you have innovation, you know, strategy of design, style, innovation material, but also new business model. And then we have uh, the responsibility, but what is this responsibility? And this is for me the, one of the key things. Uh, because we all agree that that is an holistic way. And the holistic means that for us, the first criteria to understand the sustainability is the company that is producing the material. You know, it's not possible to think about uh, a, sustainable, a sustainable, you know, product if the company has, has not a sustainable strategy or vice versa, you know. It's not possible to have sustainable products if the company does not uh, allow it. So first thing that we tell to everybody about responsibility, have a look at how the company is behaving, which is the vision that they have, the production approach, the ethical approach, you know, to workers and people. Uh, this is the first step. Second step at your uh, right is the product itself and the production process. So the ingredients, the dying and finishing, you know, the, the kind of uh, um, I don't know, the, 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 the fact that you are going to send, you know, the transportation and, uh, and also the end of life. That's new, you know, inside of this uh, element. But this is another important value. In the center, you see other um, dimensions that are not coming from the market, but have already come from the consumer. That's why I'm into the fact that, you know, the mindset and the culture change, because in the market, we never have talked about transparency till five, six years ago. Traceability, how to use water, energy, or the CO2 savings, material health, social values and animal welfare. These are all values that are coming directly from the consumer. And that's why companies and products need to respect this because these are already so strong and the consumer is speaking so loud about this. And of course, when we look at these slides, we can say, oh my God, it's a lot of things. You know, how can I do all this? How can I tick all this? And that's why when we have a company say, I'm 100% sustainable personally, even if I'm in this field since 15 years, I'm really skeptical because, uh, you know, people is talking about journey for a good reason, that it has to be a strategic approach where the company step by step is getting, you know, into each one of these value, you know, and uh, as you can see, we put a certification and analysis of the bottom, but not because we do not believe in it, but because uh, we do not start thinking that a company is sustainable because they have a certification, but it's, con it's on the contrary. We listen to a company saying, I'm sustainable because I started to be transparent. I'm looking to reduce water. I'm trying to reduce uh, uh, you know, um, I don't know, CO2. Uh, and I show you what I'm doing because I have done a study, a third party study, or a, I have a certification to prove it. That's the way we think it's important to use the certification and the analysis so that we can have a message very targeted to, of course, to our customer, because I cannot dare to tell people which are the values that you need to start from, because everybody knows the consumer, first of all, and second, each company has to have its own individual 
way to touch base with these values. But at the end, we need to have a third party that is stating that what you're saying is true so that we can be really valuable toward the consumer or toward the brand or toward the retailer. Because as you know, at the moment, the retailers is the one that started to put together brand policy concerning sustainability in a very you know, steady way. Why? Because they have consumer coming to the e-commerce or physical space to ask for it. And we have a list, uh, you know, engine that at the end of 2019, and we were outside uh, from the COVID, was listing plus 75% of requests from the consumer about sustainability. And retailers that are not, uh, let's say, just altruistic, but each single square centimeter needs to get the productivity are really pushing now to get this done because they want to get to the consumer what they need. So the, these three elements, design, uh, innovation, and uh, responsibility together, uh, you know, can create a unique selling point that we need to communicate in the right way. So, And here is just uh, a little bit, uh, you know, the jungle of the certification at company level, at product level, and also the new generation of values. Uh, the only way to be out of the jungle is to understand which kind of strategy you want to pursue and to say, I want to be something organic, I want to do something, uh, you know, about traceability, whatever, and immediately you reduce this kind of, um, you know, certification because there are special certification and analysis that is responding to the values. There is not something that is good for everything and everybody. For sure, the new values uh, you know, analysis is something really great because if you think about an LCA, for example, that is the life cycle assessment, you know, this is um, you know, uh, an analysis that accredited lab you know, uh, all over the world, the accredited one can do. And they evaluate the impact that the production of your product has on environment, on people, and they can really measure the water, the CO2, and can give a sort of passport of uh, the garment. That's something that people would like to have, especially when you do good things, you know, because that's the, the key thing. And uh, just to share with you, uh, at class, we have uh, three categories of material that we normally share. We start with natural and organics, where the material are not, not just natural and organics, but we ask, you know, following our, the criteria that I was sharing before, we are looking to materials that has a background. We know the company, all the suppliers, the end of life, how they make it. So we can give an informed picture about each single material, not to tell people which is the best, because that's not our choice, but it's the brand, the retailer, or the producer that needs to find the one that is corresponding, you know, from a technical perspective, from a look and the touch, we go back to the fact that all the values needs to go together. But now we have added also this impact that is so important because it it's needs to be simple and, uh, you know, and we go back, uh, Fabiana, to the semantic as well, we will talk in a moment about uh, how it's important also the, how to communicate. You know, we are not all scientists and we need really to be simple. So in the natural organics, we have uh, at least the 20 material from cotton to hemp to wool, you know, where we have uh, all these, uh, uh, let's say, fact sheets about the measurement from all perspective. Then we have the transform, where for me transformed, uh, is the right word, uh, you know, it's not recycled because uh, we are transforming values in other values. That's what is happened, you know, with, uh, with recycling. And here we put just, uh, you know, when we started in 2007, we had uh, three, four, um, you know, uh, let's say brand. We are putting trademark here, not because these are our partner and, you know, and we are talking about them. These are really people that we selected in the market and uh, there is a big trend that I really like, 
uh, that is to put trade brand name to fiber and to special material, uh, but not like in the 90s, you know, where you have uh, this brand like Goretes of, of, or, or Lycra, for example, where this brand was corresponding to the quality of the material, you know. Now these brands are representing the story making, how they did this. So uh, Ecotech is done with pre-consumer, um, you know, uh, leftover, uh, and uh, they show to you, you know, which is the impact, how much they have done a life cycle assessment, and they tell you how much water they are saving, how much energy they are saving, the fact that is 80% recycled and 20% natural material and not vice versa because it happens many times. And for example, in the polyamide, you have recycled polyamide that are recycled back to textile and some others are recycled back to plastic because the energy to recycle back a nylon is taking more energy than to go back to a plastic instead of the textile. So each single brand will tell you his history, you know, about the, how we made it, you know, and which are the characteristics that is so fundamental for people that need to take choices. And at class, we do this kind of, um, you know, uh, very easy way to, to look at them, each one of them. And just to share with you, you know, a little bit, which are the value of recycling, because, you know, when you talk about recycled polyester, we do not know anything about the value behind it, you know, and uh, uh, we have put a seven key point where that it helps you to identify really the, the value behind it. So how you sort it, the type of raw material, if it's natural, it's man-made or synthetic, it changed completely. The quality of the raw materials, if it's pre or post consumer. Uh, and this is so important for the trustability and the transparency. It's fundamental. The type of the process, are you recycling in a mechanical way or in a chemical one? You can understand how it's important. The, the type of machine you know, that you use are changing completely the performance of the material. The percentage of recycled content. We have so many people talking about uh, recycling and maybe it's just the 10% and the rest is the virgin material. So it's really, and then the company know-how because apart from the technical, you know, machines and so on, it's how the, the kind of savoir faire, you know, the know-how of the company that can change completely the value that you're going to deliver. And going to the innovative materials, that is the third category, it's, about uh, innovative materials. And the innovative materials are, you know, now we have four kinds of categories. New generation of polymers, bio-based materials. So materials that are coming from uh, something that is um, uh, natural-based, biofabricated, that it's about, uh, for example, the collagen, you know, raw material and the man-made fiber. So coming from uh, something natural, but with uh, um, a very specific process. And, um, you know, you said, uh, and I would like to introduce the matter here, you know, um, we can have leather, sustainable leather, but not, you know, um, uh, vegetable, you know, vegan leather. And I would like to point out for us at class, what does it mean? You know, for us, we are looking at leather when it's a bioproduct. So it's basically a material that is wasted and that need for the circular economy values to need to be recuperated and processed. But we are really, really strong in getting uh, how people is doing this process because there are so many people that is doing leather around the world. And uh, this is for me very, it's terrible, you know, for someone that is doing leather, processing leather and doing all the dyeing and finishing and, you know, in a certain way with all the transparency, there are uh, really leather producer that knows exactly where the leather are coming from, who has, uh, uh, you know, uh, tanned it. Uh, and they are so keen about uh, the people that is processing in the company, uh, so to take care about all the key things that we are asking also to normal materials because health, transparency, uh, you know, animal welfare, it's important for everybody and needs to be also for this. 
But when we say leather, unfortunately, we are talking about something that all over the world is completely, completely different. And we know that in Italy, this uh, has a different meaning. Of course, we cannot talk for all <laughs> each Italian company, but for sure, loads and approach about the luxury, for example, industry, we know that we can have all the traceability. Alessandro was talking about these values before, but we need, you know, as companies to be more clear in communicating them because it's not just about leather, because again, leather is the more ancient material in the world, <laughs> I think, in the, of the human being, but the leather that is produced and sold sometime, you know, to consumer is the number one circular economy pro product because nobody will never you know waste a product done in such a good way that can last forever for example because it's good but this at the moment sometimes is taken into a uh, let's say in, in a context that is not uh, his own one so as i'm saying to the people that is doing materials recycled or innovative or natural to be more specific with the communication and to talk more about the company, how the company is treating, which is the strategy and how they develop the values. I'm talking also about the leather, because unfortunately for some strange reason that I still need to <laughs> understand, you know, and I'm really happy that we have a bio-based material, you know, and uh, we are going to share some of the most recent one. But I think we cannot keep saying that one will stop will be able to substitute the others. It depends what you are talking about. If it's a leather, generally leather that is even does not have any kind of um, background, or if you are talking to uh, something really very specific. So here I'm sharing with you some of the you know, material that has been uh, in the communication a lot. And I'm always uh, you know, very positive about innovations because innovations, uh, is the thing that is able to create if it's responsible, okay? So responsible innovation, that's what we say at class. It's good for the environment and the human being, but we need to be informed. You know, I keep also saying that knowledge is the base. And sometimes, you know, we treat this technology, this innovation like a trend and not like what it is. Something that maybe it's complex, but uh, if we want to go to a consumer and, uh, you know, or if you write an article <laughs> about, uh, you know, a material like this, we need really to be careful because sometimes we take the responsibility to tell the world about uh, such a special value that is sustainability that can lead the reputation as well. Because today sustainability and reputation are going together. We have seen what happened with Volkswagen some years ago, you know when they did these, uh, you know, uh, they, when they had this problem of communicating in USA in a bad way. So, um, so very positive about responsible innovation, but also very keen that uh, the communication is not just uh, a trendy one, but it needs to be informed uh, and not to, to punish or to celebrate someone, but just for the brand, the retail, or the consumer to make a conscious choice. And that is the key thing we are also working on uh, at class. So we have uh, the CERTO that, uh, you know, it's a great idea because it's coming from a resource that is really, uh, you know, present and renewable without, uh, uh, you know, a lot of water, without uh, energy and many things. But as you can see, you know, and I think from the beginning, they did the amazing, uh, you know, advancement, but they're getting there with the help also of uh, some other part of the product in order to get the performance. So we have a 35% of plant-based material with, uh, you know, an additional of uh, polyester of 65%, and they're trying to get also different kinds of material, but it's normal that it needs to go step by step. And uh, they have found the application in fashion, accessory, and automotive. We have seen different uh, products that has been launched um, uh, recently uh, also in, um, in Europe. Uh, and as you can imagine, of course, uh, the, in the production process, we have, uh, we have uh, both chemical and mechanical process because you need the bonding and you need the pulp transformation. 
we know that the end of life is partially biodegradable because the polyester base is not yet possible. So uh, again, innovation and journey step by step, but to me, it's what is really wrong is to start uh, confronting the two realities because the two reality has nothing to confront at the moment. But these are new material that I'm sure that the new generation of designer will, found, will find also new application because uh, if we think at certain leather that we are thinking in the luxury area, at the moment it's very difficult to get there. But maybe there is a consumer that is looking for something different and not, it's not just the one that we are doing at the moment. So why confronting something that has nothing to confront? That is our point. Let's talk about Milo, Bold Threads, American company. I think, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's something that is going on since more or less uh, 15 years, you know, and, um, and Milo has been engineered with mycelium, that it's part of the nature, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's a material that is coming from the ground, uh, you know, uh, next to the trees. And, um, and Milo is the really trademark of Wolfred for this uh, material. And now they just launched another brand that is called Unleather. You know, that is uh, uh, the radical act of choosing products made sustainably, you know, uh, that is going over the animal and synthetic based material. It's a completely new thing. And here we are in the innovation that is getting step by step toward the market. So we are, if not in the experiment, it's a little bit more, but as you will see, uh, just a second, because as I told you, you know, uh, the, also the business model of this material is completely different. For example, you know, uh, they have done this uh, strategy of production that is uh, using European tanning partner, very reliable ones, uh, together with the, producer of mycelium partner, we do not have yet the end of life. And the marketing introduction is just by the Milo consortium about the brand that you have seen in the market recently with the launch, you know, about Adidas and Stella McCartney at least. So it's clear that they are into, you know, understanding how to go and what to do, but uh, how we can think again about uh, a substitution. You know, that's where, you know, it's difficult to look at. But for sure, we have new ammunition in our gun in order to get over and to get new possibility of production in a different way. So we have seen the Adidas uh, shoe that is made from Milo. And so they have uh, reinterpreted their basic product into, with this material that is made by really different, <laughs> Uh, you know, consistent material. And uh, we are really looking, we are really curious to know a little bit more about uh, end of life, uh, how to treat it. That's something that will, I think, uh, be uh, shared. I will have uh, some conversation with them also soon because it's a brand new thing. But, you know, the way people is talking, it looks like that tomorrow everything will be done with this material. And we know it's not possible, not today. And uh, Stella McCartney, you know, where they have uh, done, uh, you know, with Milo together with uh, recycled nylon about these uh, new handcraft panels, you know, with the scuba and, uh, and we are waiting to understand a little bit more how to take care, which are the key characteristics and how to get to the next level. Uh, and then we have the microworks and pymicellum that is about Hermes, uh, that everybody has seen the launch. And um, this company, you know, uh, that has been, uh, I think, uh, in the market since 20 years, more or less. This is the kind of, uh, you know, um, experiment and step-by-step -step innovation implementation. And, um, and they are trying, uh, you know, to to be a sort of advanced manufacturing platform for high performance material in fashion and footwear. And, you know, this fine mycelium is a groundbreaking 
uh, biomaterial that enable design possibilities. So they are quite broad in what they're saying about this material, you know. It's clear that uh, there is a part of the market that looks these, uh, you know, because they have certain belief and we respect them uh, completely about uh, uh, substituting the animal one. But we need to be ready because this kind of material will do so much more. You know, they are not born just to replace, uh, you know, uh, the animals use, but it's there to make, you know, it's a new kind of, uh, uh, let's say, boundaries that will take us in a, in a space where sometimes even looms and yards are not going to exist. So it's a revolution, but we are at the beginning. And if we think about this just one against the other, I think we are not going to uh, get the values. So micellium into bracket leather, of course, has been mooted as a potential replacement for animal leathers at the beginning, but this has been plagued by the inconsistency brought about the natural and controlled growth of the process. Now they went on and they got to a company that has to invest much more, and they got to the Sylvania material that you have seen with uh, Hermes. That is a hybrid, and it cannot be anything else than hybrid because it's not possible to go 100%, as we said from the beginning, of nature and technology. So the Victoria bag by Hermes uh, is now made of this fine mycelium. Uh, but again, it needed the, you know, both the expertise of the, you know, uh, leather producer and uh, the fine mycelium. So there is always the combination of the two things, and really fine leather producer. Uh, and, uh, you know, this Victoria bag that is made with Sylvania, that is this material made with fine mycelium and leather, is using also canvas and ever, ever calf, calf skin. So, uh, you know, it, I know it's not everything, but this is the premises and there are much more because there is Vegea, there are much more than that. But, you know, I know that we had a time limit also to respect and we cannot do everything, but looking at the objective of sustainability, looking at the objective to give something that the consumer can use and knows about it, it's... Um, the, the last bit that we have to look at is also the communication. And the communication is so important when it comes also to leather, because as we said at the beginning, sometimes it's very generic. If we are using, and if you are doing, Alessandro, special and so valuable things, you know, like Borbonese, we need to integrate these values in the communication. And because the storytelling must match the story making. Because if we have, uh, uh, fantastic story making, you know, without storytelling. Storytelling meaning we are not highlighting so much the value that we have. It's like we lose a business opportunity. If we have a fantastic storytelling without a story making, it's called greenwashing. That is 90% of the case sometime at the moment. Uh, and, and so it's so important that we learn because it's not easy. It's a new generation really of material, it's a new generation of values, but we know that the, we have a value-driven consumer today. I, I'm not going to share the market research because it's taking a little bit of time, but it's clear now after COVID, just I if, Sorry, I think there is a microphone open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'm afraid uh, uh, we have. Um, we did it. Maybe if you can go to draw to your conclusions, please, Juicy. Here I am. You know, I wanted just okay, to good. say storytelling. Because you have story. already a couple of questions. So um, uh, uh, usually we have questions at the end, but as I knew uh, Mr. Pescara had to leave, but uh, I saw that he's still with us. Uh, so in, at, the same, uh, at the same time, um, I, so I will give you the chance to answer the questions that you have already received by now. Uh, there is two, one is said it's so interesting, so from Anastasia Palunina, so thanks. 
And we have another couple of questions for you. The first one, it seems that it's easier to switch to sustainability when you are a big well-known brand with a high awareness and an audience engaged with it. But what should a new upcoming brand do to become sustainable from the beginning at first. Uh, Natalia Orlova, it seems there are, this seems two questions uh, overlapping one to another. Um, so let's answer maybe the first one because the second one is, I think it's very, it's very difficult to, uh, to answer maybe for you, but uh, it's easier to switch to sustainability when you are a big well-known brand and high awareness or uh, when you are a young brand, a new upcoming brand, to start as sustainable at first. I think, in my opinion, the first case is worse than the second one. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know if I need to answer or if Alessandro, sorry. Yeah, you have to, you okay. have to. Okay. It's no, up to you. Uh, well, it's very funny to a certain extent, as you said, Fabiana, because... Um, you know, the, the most important companies keep saying that it's easy to a new designer to start the company with these, uh, you know, elements from, then changing from a company to, you know, to switch to these new way of doing things uh, and uh, making things. Uh, for a new designer, I think the only difficult into bracket that we have experienced in these years, you know, because we are doing this since 2007, is that sometime for them it's, a little bit complex to find materials, you know, because, uh, you know, it's um, when you go to material, the, the fabric producer or the material producer sometimes are not so uh, structured to get, uh, you know, small things from many people because that is normally, you know, the, the kind of challenge that has been overcome because there are really interesting marketplace. We as well, we started one, two years ago because uh, we wanted to align uh, these. So for the big company or the famous company, uh, you know, for sure it's easy to break because they have maybe the shoulder to start and change, but then uh, it takes time. I remember one of the conversations that we had with people like VF Corporation, so Napapiri, the North Face, some years ago, and they said that in order to find our transparency, they took one year and a half to understand where all the things were because uh, is not something that was, you know, uh, a value that they were looking at, at at this time. Now the company has went through a very important process and investment, and they are, for example, after four years, the ones that are promoting regenerative agriculture in order to keep um, their impact at, at minimum, for example. And They did it for uh, doing the new boots that they presented last September. So a new way to look at leather as well. Okay, uh, all right. Now you have another another questions. What about durability of these materials, especially in shoe? How long do they or are they supposed to last? Well, at the moment we do not have this kind of information because the material has been released, uh, you know, in a. Uh, item form uh, basically three weeks ago that's what we are looking at uh, but we are looking for data because uh, as we said at the beginning these are really latest latest generation and it's not uh, you know it's really important to look at them like and that's why I think they've done also a consortium to launch it because these are really innovative leaders and they will uh, you know, keep the pace in uh, developing different stage of innovation, but we do not have this kind of data, not me at, at least, but we are going to get them uh, as soon as possible, as soon as they will release it. Fabiana? Okay, right. Yes, Alessandro, do you want to add something? Something, uh, something on Juicy, as, as, as she said before, that um, answering the question about uh, e e is going to be harder from a, a big corp or a, a new one. I just can say that mostly uh, the consumer uh, behavior is very important because uh, how you are cool, how fast you are cool, uh, how fast it's going to uh, be easy to change, uh, 
into uh, a new typology of product. Uh, I mean, uh, if I'm going to change uh, my product uh, totally uh, into uh, a green one, uh, yes, for sure, it's going to take time for the whole process because we are a little bit bigger than, than, than others. But I cannot achieve the target in itself because my consumer do not have the mindset, because I do not have the aspirationality or the coolness. I'm not cool enough for that. Uh, that means uh, that uh, sometimes uh, um, many brands such as Hermes, Louis Vuitton, the luxury system, let me say uh, Off-White, Virgil Abloh, uh, they are going to just design one product, uh, they can do whatever they want because uh, it's a community and it's uh, mostly easier for them to discuss because they have really abilities and the coolness of the brand sometimes uh, uh, accept many things uh, and the changes in itself. Sometimes for others that are not so cool enough for the people or for some typology of consumer is going to take a little bit longer time. Uh, that means that uh, um, when new designer is going to approach something, I think that uh, rather the product is going to be important uh, all the process uh, all the mindset the communication and the idea in itself then uh, the managing uh, of the uh, materials uh, uh, can be um, recycled uh, a half percent recycled not recycled but i think that the coolness uh, in fashion is very important and that's something that uh, i have to say because i recognize every day that and uh, um, if I'm going to talk to my consumer, uh, the willingness of change, uh, sometimes uh, they don't want to change uh, and then don't really care anything about recycle, about uh, uh, green or whatever. So it's really uh, the behavior of the consumer that need to be educated uh, in this typology of things. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. That, that was Giuseppe Bettoni that was saying smart tagging is for sure one of the solutions. Um, you know, I've been making a, a big inquiry in the first issue of the Folio della Moda, which is this in um, the supplements, uh, the insert, the monthly insert of the daily folio. And it seems there is a, a very uh, big uh, discussion going on in Brussels around this point. So um, I'm afraid there will be a, a, a lot of lobbying and a lot of advocacy for uh, fast fashion um, within uh, the association and actually an incredibly, or maybe not so incredibly, one, um, the opportunity to study new textiles and the different classification of textiles and materials, sustainable materials. And part, uh, the biggest part of this association is made by fast fashion producers. So can you imagine what is, is going to happen or possibly will happen? Uh, so, um, uh, I have another story, another, another little, very, very small story about Hermès. 20 years ago, I, I was a friend of uh, Mr. Jean-Louis Dumas, uh, let's say the, the man who, who actually invented the Birkin bag. And he decided to approach uh, rubber leather. Maybe you are too young to remember the rubber leather, but many of us remember. You remember the one that you, uh, I see that Juicy Beton is nodding. So she say, okay, right. I remember, you know, this kind of bubble of bubble gum uh, bags. And then uh, uh, Hermes produced this. And he actually, Mr. Uh, Dumas was supporting um, a tribe of Amazonians. So uh, it was 500 families. So it was a very small community who actually lived out of this rubber. And he started making this rubber leather. Um, he launched uh, a Birkin and a Kelly bag made in rubber and that was treated like leather, like uh, real leather, but unfortunately needed a little bit of um, maintenance. 
Unfortunately, most of these uh, of Hermes consumers refuse to approach this kind of uh, rubber, leather, of whatever you should have called it or he would have called it. So he had to um, leave uh, the tribe by himself. And another friend of mine decided to uh, substitute Mr. Dumas. And it, the story went on for a very long time until um, it was the end of everything because this rubber ladder had no fortune. Actually, the man who uh, decided to support, again, this tribe is now the president of the Soccer Italian League. So <laughs> it's an incredible story. Um, but, you know, uh, there was a completely different approach to what could be uh, thought as sustainable 20 years ago. So I could see that coming. And there is, um, that's the reason why I will talk to you just for a very few minutes about this, what I've called these words of sustainability. I have to tell you, I've been trying to uh, uh, talk with some people, uh, with a professor of linguistics, which I actually am not, because I'm a specialist of French literature. Uh, but um, it seems that our uh, uh, semiologists or uh, people dealing or professor of linguistics actually didn't have uh, time or interest in, uh, in uh, developing what is, uh, I think it's, it's incredibly important. That means the linguistics and the lexicon of sustainability. So I'll do it myself, going back to what, um, I, I, I don't know if you, uh, if you can see that. Um, sorry, I'm not very good at school. Uh, 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 uh. Um, sorry, it's not easy to, okay, right. Can you see that? Okay, right. So, where is the sustainability? Um, over the last two or three days, um, on the upcoming Earth Day, there was, as you can see, a, a lot of uh, articles, and I received so many press releases about sustainability that I couldn't believe it. Today it was just starting from, from yesterday to now it was more than 70, so it's a lot. So, a uh, glossary, anyone? This is just what I've found in three days out of, and this is just nouns. So Earth Day, Mother Nature, action, alternative energy, atmosphere, benefit, bio energy. But you can, um, I, I'm sure you can't believe it, but when I was young, um, the notion, we were actually bro uh, grown up out of plastic, I'm afraid. And a, a, a lot of, um, for, for, for sure, a lot of poisonous candies and what kind of uh, color uh, uh, that we found in sweets, etc. So this is something that is incredibly uh, new for in a certain point of view. Uh, the notion of ecology, the idea of ecology, uh, started no more than thirty years ago, and now we have this incredible uh, richness of lexicon. So uh, uh, the eco-choice, the eco-tourism, which is a, a sort of uh, oxymoron because if there is something that is incredibly polluting, it's just us taking a lot of, and we were talk, uh, taking a lot of planes before um, the pandemic. Uh, so and, and we, we created a lot of pollution. So eco-tourism means you have to go from your, or maybe on foot, on bike, by yourself and a small group of people not leaving waste behind you. So again, glossary, this is expression, a phrase for going green. 100, how many times did you read all these things a lot, uh, over the last um, maybe three days? 
100% recycle, which I don't know if this is something that like that exists, uh, be uh, benefit for both your family and the environment, a good choice for the environment, the green way to a passion, a passion for helping. So um, part of a low impact lifestyle. You can see this, uh, it is not just a phrase, it is something more. It is, again, another, some other phrases and ways, reconnect us to the natural world, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Also, Giuseppe Bettoni said the same thing, reduces the need to save energy, resources, money, eco, eco-friendly, the old uh, notion of eco. So, uh, Sustainability is expressed as meeting present environmental, social, and economic needs without compromising this factor to future generation is what uh, we were talking before. So preserve that for future generation. You don't go, you don't look back, but you look at the future. It mixes this kind of uh, semi, uh, um, semis, so it means this, uh, different, let's say, clouds, uh, three different clouds it, it, that makes it in different percentage, psychological needs, safety, love and belonging, esteem and self-esteem, and on top of this kind of ladder is self-actualization. So it is not as I, when, uh, um, as I, uh, when I started approaching this subject, more than 20 years ago, it was eco and it was bio. So it was something which was not actually related to you. It was related to, who knows, uh, the economics, the firms and companies taking all these um, uh, aspects into consideration. Now the perception is up to you. So it's direct. So it uses a lot of words, words that are um, intended to provoke a psychological and uh, sentimental response, something that I, I think that Jean-Jacques Rousseau would have appreciated a lot. So uh, humanity is complex and the ecosystem is even more so. People have a very limited ability to handle complex systems successfully. I'm sorry to say that, but that's the reason why we are bombed by these many words. Uh, you know, this is a very, the story of humanity being alienated from nature, as I said before, it's very long and most of you coming from, let's say, Europe and maybe um, the northern part of the US, know a lot about Rousseau or this philosopher from of the Enlightenment era, era that was um, the, the first one to point out the fact that the, the industrial revolution that they have just started will have alienated humanity from nature. So together with abstract thinking, humans have acquired the ability to form a society that can exist in the short term. So we uh, 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 it's what I was saying before. We see all the, the evolution of this approach. It is uh, something that is related to uh, also to uh, short times and let's say uh, very precise times uh, combined with uh, ec um, with uh, economical issues and. Um, obviously in our times, health and security issues like a pandemic. We have been thrilled and incredibly interested by this kind of uh, language and communication by the fact that we are living in very special times. So um, giving as a sustainability priority meeting these basic needs appears to be a major challenge now which was not maybe before now we can proceed to uh, what is the sign value of a brand in relation 
to the natural environments and society. Now it's paramount to the development of CSR, so corporate social responsibility. I've been, uh, I've been working with a couple of funds and uh, re financial research uh, uh, companies. They have told me straight that if you have not, if you don't approach uh, sustainability and if you don't publish a, a social responsibility balance, balance sheet, you will not be willing to get any fund by millennials and mostly the new generation money. So it's not a choice, it's a must. Uh, if you are a big company trying to get money, uh, you have to be, and you have to uh, spouse to marry this kind of language. So um, I would like to uh, very easily, because we are very late, um, it was ex extremely interesting what we, what we have been talking about today, the kind of language that you have, sustainable for those of you who come from Europe or maybe have studied Latin, Sustainable is very linked. It's in a sort of way, it's a very old because it's a word that comes from the 13th century. Um, but, and it's a very old word, but it is also a very new one because we haven't been confronted with sustainability until uh, I think a couple of years ago. Before it was not sustainable, it was eco. Now sustainable means many things. The, uh, when uh, I, I always say to my students, when in doubt, don't go to et etymology. Etymology of sustainability means not just you, means a community, at least two people. So I sustenere means in Latin, I keep you up, I help you. So uh, it's not just me, it's Again, this idea of community. And you see this kind of uh, communication of advertisement, say sustainability innovation is a powerful engine for growth. You don't have, you, uh, uh, you know, you see it's Nike because uh, obviously you see the logo. Um, but uh, it combines the fact that energy and growth and the evolution must be sustainable. The fact that no one says now that you have to uh, buy something, you are marrying a universe of values. And this is clear, even when you are not actually marrying anything, like, you know, the famous conscious and exclusive, more sustainable fashion. Most sustainable fashion, this is, was a very, uh, I'm sure that you uh, have um, got in touch with this story. Um, it was launched more than 10 years ago and, and some issues re re have arisen around the Swedish uh, retail giant H&M, including the controversies of the diffusion line, the conscious collections, only being a minuscule percentage of H&M's total stock. Uh, it means less than 2%. But with garments made by organic cotton, by hypocritically still fabricated in, in sweatshop shop conditions. So, you know, uh, eco and sustainable, it's not just sustainable for me, which I, I live in the rich and happy and fortunate part of the world. It must be sustainable for everyone. It's not just the planet. It just, it's also people who live on the planet. So. Uh, another for words of leather, a responsible leather, how it is possible. And we have been talking about the fruit leather. Uh, the, the story of uh, misleading uh, communication have been touched by Giuseppe Bettoni before. So one must be very careful when using um, words, uh, which would be fruit substitute to leather. And now something that I, I have received just today. So uh, I've put this time, I I've received at noon. So when I was just finishing this very small um, notes, 
I have received this. Another new brand, you know, this kind of this the kind of story. Oh, I it's just a t-shirt. Yeah, this was uh, this exactly what other eight billion people said. Another new t-shirt. So uh, you complain with sustain maybe. Uh, this is a new brand who actually uh, um, sent me a, a press release this morning saying about this all this beautiful storytelling about one of the boys who, who was actually fired by the bank where he was working and so he decided to launch this and um this uh new uh this new brand it, it, exactly on earth day and uh, i said what are you making uh, t-shirts oh why and uh, it's uh, uh, t-shirts and other products made out of um, uh, recycled nylon and recycled polyester. And I say, okay, right, you are another one coming from um, the Econil story. And they said, okay, right. You know, uh, when you say you complain, we sustain. Look at the picture. Look at the picture. The, how it is worth. So uh, maybe you have this idea that the T-shirt maybe could be uh, sustainable, as we said. But uh, even if I am not such a technical expert, but a little bit I am. And I said, I, 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 I called the PR and I said, uh, are they the jeans they are wearing, the denim they are wearing sustainable? She didn't answer. Obviously they have made all this beautiful picture about uh, recycling, um, uh, about what could be uh, um, recycling, but it's obviously not because they are referring this like most most of um, the firms or most of the fashion companies, they are referring to this. Uh, this is the place. Uh, I, I know the people are a very, very interesting, a very big family. Uh, this is Aquafil. This is the, the plant of Aquafil between Brescia and Trento in the northern side of Italy. Uh, most of what you see as eco-nail and eco-nylon comes from here. This is all the nets, all the fishing nets, they amass and they get throughout the world everywhere. They pay people to go in the, uh, into the sea, uh, mostly in, south, in the southern part of Asia. Uh, where a lot of um, nets or fish nets are abandoned in the sea. They pay people to get this kind of uh, nets that are trans transferred to the northern side of it in Arco di Prento and made out of in new thread, in new recycled thread. So Prada, this people who launched this and that said we are sustainable, actually uh, go to these plants. Uh, the, the plants that work in sustainability are very few. And it is really uh, very difficult to understand what the percentage because, again, there is no tagging, that tagging, there is no idea. So you get a lot of storytelling. Today, we have a chat this morning with Lydia Firth. Uh, the founder of Eco Age, maybe you know she's also oh, she was also the, the, the wife of Colin Firth and of actor Colin Firth, and she's the founder of this big um, group of interest that's called Eco Age. And she said something which I think it's very important when you approach uh, the language and this kind of in, in, enormous quantity of misleading information that you get. Uh, when you never get the real percentage of uh, recycled materials and you don't have the right tagging. There is a small and very useful step. Our 30 wears eco age campaign. Before buying something, ask yourself if you would wear it a minimum of 30 times. If the answer is yes, buy it. But, if it, but you will be surprised how many times the answer is no. Today's disposable fashion has become a normality. We buy a garment for a few euros 
uh, to wear it at a party or for a season. We have been addicted to fast fashion as well as sugar. Shopping has become a drug. Uh, it was again, uh, it was um, uh, again the end of my inquiry. At the end of what companies are making, of the effort they are making, uh, you know, it's a story of offer, of demand and offer. And you are the demand. If the demand is for uh, another T-shirt out of eight billions T-shirts a year, uh, you understand there is no chance that all these beautiful words that we have been pronouncing today uh, would be of any use. Because it's, again, as we said, as Giuseppe Bettoni said, as Alessandro Pescara said, it's again, it's up to you. It's like, uh, it's the same time that, me, that they in Vivian West would uh, say, please uh, buy it sensibly and keep it long and wear it uh, many, many times. That's the, the only way to be sustainable. It is not to other people to be sustainable. It's also, it's also to you. So uh, uh, I think you, if you have any, oh, things that you have um, uh, any question, any seems that you have. So good evening, say Natalia Tikomirova. Good evening, we are here because we are studying fashion. So we are interested in some ways or other in the field. But as for my experience, not so many people are concerned about this topic, sustainability. Are you sure? Before we spoke about cultures, culture and consciousness, etc. It studies that it's only impossible to change a person after seven years old. Are you sure? No. Not not seven year old. It's Lily. It, <laughs> you know, seven year old Daniela Natalia. It's just the beginning of the uh, the forming of your personality. So, my question is: Are there any programs to educate new generation? Thank you. Oh yes, uh, at least I don't know Natalia Tikomirova. I think that you come from. Uh, maybe don't know uh, the eastern part of the former uh, former Moscow oh, yeah. directly Russia. So I don't know if you have any um, programs in your country. Uh, I've been invited a couple of times uh, in the last time two years ago talking to talk about exactly to talk about this. So um, I think I don't know if you have it. Uh, yes, we have it in primary school and also in secondary school. Um, the problem is that we, we don't have any programs in, on other issues, but we have a lot on defending pets and a lot on defending the earth. Then, you know, it depends also on the education of the family. But as I think that both uh, Giusy Bettoni and Alessandro Pescara said before, it takes time. It takes at least one generation. It's not something that you switch, you snap your finger and it's done. It is not. So, uh, uh, but it's, you know, Natalia, you should be around 20. Uh, you should pass this knowledge to your children and maybe your children or maybe your nephews will, uh, will be uh, ready for this big uh, change. But it's, it's up to you. Remember, uh, sustainability, it's a community, but it's also you, it's not just other people. So let me say if you are anyway, independently we are using. Um, Anastasia Palmina, there are some people who wear clothes only from natural materials. Oh yes, because of obvious, obvious advantages. And it is difficult to compare with sustainable clothes. They don't have the same tactile benefits. Uh, you know that, uh, uh, just a few things. Um, people tend to um, forget that silk is animal textile. It is not vegetable textile. So um, maybe they, they never think that the poor worms that make silk are also animals and in many countries are still boiled. So, um, uh, it is it is intended as a natural materials and as a vegetable materials, but it is not. 
So we don't have the same tactile benefits. Maybe Juzi Bettoni could answer to this. If she's still there, Juzi? I'm here, sorry, I have to activate um, the okay. microphone. Okay, right. So they don't have the same tactile benefits. Well, you know, I was uh, answering that it depends, um, you know, because I saw that um, Anastasia was saying uh, natural materials as different advantages than sustainable, but sometimes natural materials are also sustainable. And I can assure you, you know, it's very difficult with a digital conversation like today, but we have materials that are really sustainable and it's much better than the perceived natural, <laughs> let's say because uh, <clears throat> there are uh, amazing things uh, ongoing with uh, you know, technologies that you apply also to material. So for example, at the beginning of all these revolution of material, the recycled cotton was really dry, something that you know, could not even be touched. Now there are um, amazing things. We just got um, uh, some years ago, not a lot, uh, this cotton coming from uh, Greece, for example, uh, that is grown there and they have made a protocol also with the farmer locally uh, that has uh, the technology also to, you know, pipelines that are going to uh, put the right water and the right, um, uh, let's say, chemicals that you need, uh, you know, for these fields in a way that uh, you are saving water, even if it's cotton and uh, count of cotton it's higher so this means that the hand is amazing so you have something that it's not organic but it's even better and you have a protocol you know about people about wages you know where the cotton is coming from so there has been an advancement of this kind of things and if you think that farmers in Greece for it's called supreme green cotton these farmers are really young and they got every morning on their smartphones how much water they need to put into the fields because of these uh, you know, um, uh, um, they have these uh, station on, uh, uh, on um, satellite system, sorry, that is uh, checking the humidity of the, that is going to be in Greece in that part. And it's, you know, and, and you have also a study that has been made an LCA, so life cycle assessment, and they can show minus 40% of water, raising the quality and, uh, you know, it's, it's a new world. But the problem is that even if we are in this new area of communication, it's so sometimes difficult to get this message passing that there are thousands of cotton, thousands of recycled polyester, thousands of, you know, Fabiana was mentioning before. And we need to get this knowledge about these things or it's going to be impossible or very difficult to get uh, values because all these information means values, values for the consumer, values for the community and values for the new way to do business because it's clear that this is a new way to do business to, today, so. Thank you, Juzi. I think we are actually at the end of this very, this very intense two hours that we spent together. So I'd like to uh, ask Fulvia Baki to, to, to draw the conclusions and to Roman and to draw the conclusion. And then we will say goodbye to the next one. Oh, next one will be on a cinema, actually. So um, I think, and I hope, cross fingers, that my friends uh, Massimo Cantini Parrini, uh, who uh, have been nominated for best costume for Pinocchio, uh, will uh, won. So we will see in a three days, and I hope that uh, we will have him and another uh, and, and, and another people who actually work in cinema with leather and other materials will be with us on next appointment. So uh, I, I leave the floor to Fulvia for saying goodbye and draw the conclusion. Thank you. Sorry, very few words to thank our speakers. It has been a very interesting seminar and thank you to the student who follow us. And I want to say this is a very, uh, so important topic. If you have any question, you can write to UNICH to have more information, even on behalf of Juicy, I think uh, you are at your disposal. <laughs>
thanks and see you very soon. Uh, uh, we, we have uh, maybe a, a Romana has something to say also for um... no, just to thank you very much for this uh, for this intense seminar. It was really, really rich and full of stimuli. So I hope that our students uh, may take advantage of uh, this and to and they start uh, and they continue the conversation on this topic with uh, uh, the, the, with our guest today and in general with UNIT and Fabiana Giaconotti who organized the, the seminar. So thank you very much for this. Thank you. And thank I you. like to say goodbye to Alessandro Pescara, Giusy Bettoni, uh, Romana Andò and everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.